All right, everybody. Uh, my name is Antonio Edward, and I'm here to show you the difference between Office 365 groups and Microsoft Teams. Actually, there's not much of a difference, but there are some differences. Um, actually, additions when you use Microsoft Teams. And I explain all that. Before we get into that, I'm going to show you how to create an Office 365 group as well as a Microsoft team. I think uh, there are several different ways to do it. In fact, I almost did, did not prepare for another way. There are four different ways to do it. There are about two different ways. You can also do it in the SharePoint landing page, but I'm not going to go there with that because that's it's just too much, too many different ways to do so many different things in Office 365. So let's just discuss the two ways that users, as a, a default setting, users are able to use um, Office 365 groups. Okay. So um, first, in your email, you go to your email. You can do this in Outlook as well. That's right. You can do this in Outlook. So you're in your regular email, right? This is what your regular email looks like. You got your folders over here. You can also pull down your groups right here as well. There you go. Create. You can create a new group right here. You can also do it here. There's another way. So if you're in a group, um, you're going to see this on the left hand side if you're already in a group. And so you just got to click on create. There you go. Create a group. You also got add a team. Now I'm going to show you the difference between adding a team and creating an Office 365 group. Anybody in the company can do this by default. Now administrators are able to control what they users are able to or and not able to do in fact you can even control which domain name they can use and i highly recommend that because take a look at this when i first set up started setting up my uh office 365 groups okay let me just go ahead and pull up 365 groups automatically you notice that both of them this is not my primary domain name okay my primary domain name is shiz.tv, but this says shiz.in, and you cannot really change the domain name. So would, and so to force people to use a certain domain, there is a PowerShell script that you have to run to set the default domain name for all Office 65 group users. And then if you, the thing you probably will say, well, I'm a company with only one domain name. I, in my company though, I have several, I mean, I just have like a ton of domain names here. Um, I'm not sure why these are showing up like this. Every once in a while, if GoDaddy has an issue or Microsoft, it does this, but ignore that. I know it works. All right, so shiz.in, and then of course I have shiz.tv as well which is my default domain, okay? So let's say you only got one domain, right? And I don't have, you don't have multiple domain names. Well, here you go, g.domainname.com. So what you have to do is you go to GoDaddy. Well, I use GoDaddy, but you can use any uh, DNS provider and you set up a subdomain, okay? GoDaddy is really, really easy. Other DNS providers, it may be a little harder or just as easy. You may have to contact the provider to know how to set up subdomains, okay? But um, if you notice, I'm gonna click on this one. This one's not really set up yet, but if you look at the DNS requirements, this is what you have to do. Um, see that G? That G is a subdomain. So I have to put in the host. If you look at this one, okay, I got to close out of this first. Okay. 
this one uses the host as an at symbol on some DNS providers you have to put you know the domain name and a dot at the end of that but like I said every DNS provider works differently on GoDaddy you just got to put the at symbol but with uh, this subdomain the host is the G notice the auto discover auto discover dot G dot Sariant dot net okay so this is how you have to set it up again you add the domain and let's say you create added a subdomain which you could be it could be whatever you want it to be it could be something like internal dot your domain dot com and the first thing it wants you to do waiting for it to do it real quick is it wants you to verify the domain name just like you did when you did your initial domain I'm gonna go ahead and close this for now because I'm not going to do that because there are other things you have to do because you got to use PowerShell to set up the use of that subdomain so once you got your domain name set up use that PowerShell script I put the link in the uh, description below where you can use PowerShell to set up a default domain for your Office 65 groups okay um, notice here too that if I go back to groups that uh, most of my groups uses any name at domain.com you may not want that because it looks confusing when you have a name at your domain.com what you may want to do is add a prefix so like here all my future groups did this grp dash a name at shiz so even if I create a group called um, hello I'm gonna call it hello one and it says it's available right Now I'm doing this in the Office 365 Admin Center. I create the group. It takes a few minutes to kick in. All right, let me look for that hello group. You see that it automatically appended my prefix. Again, you got to use PowerShell to do that. In the description below, it will it will discuss how to use PowerShell to set that up. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this group because I don't want a hello group. Well, actually, I'll keep it because there's a reason why I want to show you this. Now, doing it here only creates an Office 365 group. If you go to your email, whether you use the the plus symbol create that I showed you before, or you use the create button here, you click on create. And on the right side there, it shows you pretty much the same thing you saw in the admin center. I'm going to call this one Hello2. This right here is awesome because any conversation that's done here, you see where my mouse is at, automatically gets sent to the user's inbox, the members, whoever are the members of that group it will get sent to their inbox at the same time it is also stored in one place so you know how your inbox is right you got a uh, loads and loads of emails and you're looking for that one email that was sent to the group well you know you can always go to the group directly and go and get right to that one email that you're looking for quicker than you can in your regular inbox especially for those of you who get a lot of emails my email I get a bunch of spam but I haven't really adjusted my spam filters yet. Okay. So I'm going to add myself as a member. Doing it here in your email, you're automatically the owner. You are the owner of the group. You can.
edit the group at any time. And you can also allow external people to send emails to the group automatically so that people can email to the group. If you don't have that check, if you email this group, it, they will get a bounce back. So um, you decide if you want to receive emails from the outside and they will come here. All right, so now we got group two, right? So we got group one and group two. Here's what else I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a Microsoft team. Now notice what I'm doing here. It's the same thing, right? Okay, so I just put team three. Now I got a team three. I'm going to add members. Okay, I can try this. Oh, I think the reason why it's because I'm already a member of the group. Right. OK, duh. So it automatically adds you as the owner and member of the group. Now I got a team three. Microsoft Teams. Now notice what happens. I'm going to hit refresh. I'm also going to hit refresh. OK, team three. Notice it's different now because Microsoft Teams is slightly different, but it's still the same. Notice it says Office 365 Groups. What? Didn't I create that in Teams? Oh, this is where it gets a little confusing. Um, and this is uh, the hardest to explain, but very easy to explain. When you create an Office 365 group, this came out about two or three years ago. Um, as actually about three years ago now, uh, about two years ago little over two years ago from this point of the upload of this video and uh, 365 groups I was like wow that's gonna be the ultimate it's gonna be the best ever because you got conversations you got files and calendars and notebooks it's like a very easy you know even got planner and you also got a dedicated SharePoint site which I thought was the best okay and SharePoint site is, is is phenomenal. Okay, it has everything you need: documents, notebooks, and you can have a link to the conversations. You can add additional document libraries. There you go. Just click on New Document Library. Too easy, right? You can have multiple pages, uh, news posts. You can even add additional apps, just like you can in a regular. SharePoint site, but this SharePoint site is open to everyone. Now, the difference between SharePoint and the Office 365 group sites, which is also a SharePoint site, is you don't have the robust restrictions and permission settings, nor you don't have the simple little, guess what you're missing, which is what all admins needs, site settings. Where is that? Oh, where did that go? Oh my goodness. Site settings is gone. That's because this is not as robust. It's just a quick, simple, here you go. Members of that group have access to every single thing in here as editors, as members. And, and if you want to give people access, just add them as a member. You click on members and you add them as a member. Oh, where else can you do that? Well, you click on members in the email part. It takes a little bit longer to show up. You click on add members. And you type in your name here. Oh, I can do that here, here. I can also, as an admin, do it here. Add members as an admin. And in the Office 365 Groups Exchange Admin Center, I can add them as an admin here as well, or as a member, I mean, I keep saying admin, as a member, you add them as a member. So several different ways to do several different things in Office 365, right? There you go. Too easy, right? So I'm gonna hit refresh again.
you got three brand spanking new Office 365 groups. What? But one of them is a team, right? Right? So what happened there? Why didn't my Hello Ones and Hello Twos become Microsoft Teams? Hmm, that's a question for you. But this is an Office 365 group? That's right. So I'm going to hit refresh over here. And also, because I'm about to go to Team 3, Office 365 groups. Let me close out of this real quick. All right, so this is where it gets a little uh, bit confusing. It's taking a little bit of time to load up here. Okay, so I'm going to go to Team 3, Microsoft Teams. But this is not Microsoft Teams. What is this? This is Office 365 Groups. And it will say it's an Office 365 Group even in the invitation email that they get here. Right? Files, calendars, notebook, planner, and site. I'm going to open up Planner. I'm going to open up the notebook for you. I'm also, let me see, does it, okay, it loads in the same page because it's an exchange. So let me go back here. I'm also going to go to the SharePoint site because I want to show you guys something here. This is, this is what, okay, it may take a little bit of time for that SharePoint site to be created. Oh. Just to let you know, if you create an Office 365 group or Microsoft Teams, it may take some time to set up. So give it time. It won't set up right away. Okay. Uh, so I have to show you the site part later. But I want to show you something in Teams real quick because we're in the Team 3 planner and we're also in the Team 3 conversations. And we're also going to be in the Team 3 notebook which is, is in SharePoint, that's right. We'll show you that later once SharePoint site comes up. All right, so this is conversations, right? This is where I think Microsoft should have done something different. Why call this conversations when you also got conversations here? Okay, so what did I say here? I said, what, hello? Okay, so I'm gonna put a new conversation here and I'm just gonna say, Hi. Oh, wait a minute. Doesn't this look different? Because in Microsoft Teams, it's more like an instant message. There is no subject or, or body. It's more like this is more of an instant message than an email thread. Okay. That's that conversations. This one here. I'm going to put the word hi, but the reason why it's called conversations in Office 365 groups because I can click on this and then people can come behind me and reply to it. So I'm going to reply to it. Let's say I'm another person and I will say, oh, hi back. Then we're going to say this is more of a conversation email threads. I say threads because each of these conversations, as you can see over here, are different conversation threads. Okay. I can also reply to this one too. Uh, reply to this thread. Okay. This is a thread right here. And people can go on and on and on. And as you can tell, it tells you what you've seen, what you haven't seen. Mark red and unread, right? There's no way to right click and mark as red. And I noticed that when you do read something, it takes a little bit of time for that mark as red to implement. Once you read it, it stays red. Okay. There's no way to mark it back to unread uh, like you could do with a regular email. This right here, I can reply to my instant message by doing this. Hello back. And it maintains that thread and everybody in the group sees it. So this is more like a persistent chat system that Office 65 lacked for so many years. 
oh, I've been begging Microsoft to please, please set up persistent chats in Skype for Business. This is their answer. And this is actually way better than a standard Skype for Business persistent chats. Okay. Uh, because as you can tell, you got a lot of options here. And you got the same Giphy. It's, you know, Giphy is a third party company. So all those things you see in Facebook GIFs, you can do the same thing here. Like I can put Die Hard, one of my favorite movies, right? And I get the same GIFs. Now I have the machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. And so, and I can send that on over as a little joke to the group. You can turn this off. If you don't like all this shenanigans going on in your group, <laughs> you can literally turn that off. And I will show you that in a minute. Plus, you can add stickers. Kind of cute, right? So I want to put like um, a birthday. Put that dog in there. Now I can put something like happy birthday. See how that works? It's like setting up my own meme. Happy birthday, Jim. And Jim, you press enter, and Jim will see that. And then Jim can reply saying, oh, thank you, fellas. Right? Too easy, right? And this is in a particular team. So let's say you got the finance team, you got the marketing team, you got the, the IT support team. Everybody can be in a certain team. And then you can also set up another team or sub teams. OK, um, which will allow you to add channels. So you got the general tab. So let's say you're, you have a Sanchez team. So the manager is named uh, Mr. Sanchez, right? Okay, trying to, there we go. You got the Sanchez team, which has their own thread. And then you have, uh, let's say, I don't know. Um, my last name is Edward, so the Edward team. And there you go. So you got all these teams here, right? The general tab, Edward. And then Sanchez team, and, and and you can add as many as you want. So you have like the manager, but the general one is like uh, the one that has the main data or information for the entire team. Or what if someone wants to share something like, "Hey guys, how do you set up and?" Office 365 group because you want to ask more than your team. You want to ask everybody how you do that, and everybody will see this. Now, if it's specific to the team, Sanchez can, or okay, my name is Edward, right? So I can put, hey, team, um, there are a lot of people calling in about issues with free busy. You know, and then I can put, you know, a, a Microsoft support article that explains how to fix it so that people can fix their issue. So that's um, uh, one way of doing that. And then so Edward can speak to his team directly. Everybody will get the information in general and the general can belong to the to the actual director of that department. And team three is like the IT support team or something. Now, here's the thing. Anybody who is a member of Team 3 will have access to all the different channels. Keep that in mind. There's no way to set individual membership to specific managers. Because you can tell here, there's no add a member or anything. So if they're a member of this, of this team, they will have access to all these different channels. Okay, so that's something to think about. Um, notice here, let me see if the SharePoint site is finally provisioned and 
Uh, no, it isn't. Okay. Uh, every once in a while, when you create a, a SharePoint site within, within an Office 365 group or Microsoft Teams, it takes, sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it happens within a few minutes. You got to give it time. Okay. It, it's just what it is. SharePoint sometimes takes a long time, and it could be that uh, there's a lot of people trying to do the same thing at that particular time, and it may not be here in the United States. It could be in other countries where it's work time. For me, it's 1124. But um, okay, so uh, let's move on. So I won't be able to show you sites today. I'll try it again before the end of this video. But keep in mind, when you're working in, I want to add the planner as a awesome thing for Microsoft Teams so I can assign tasks for my teammates. And I call it plans. You can call it whatever you want. Let's say if you have different projects, you can add in multiple planners in Microsoft Teams. Now, I'm not going to discuss Planner, okay? If you want to learn about Planner, there are some really wonderful 365 articles that talks about how to use the Planner, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Notice that the General tab doesn't have the Planner, but the Edward team does. Or no, Sanchez. Oh, Sanchez team um, does, right? Notice in Office 365 groups is already here. But if I click on Planner here, I'll go ahead and close this one here. Notice that this does not reflect to this planner here. It will not. This planner is specific to Microsoft Teams only. This planner is the Office 365 group planner. And this is something that you want to make sure you inform employees about to make sure that they understand that. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I show you that because I just want to let you know that it's different. Now, um, if I can show you the SharePoint site, that would be great too because I do want to show you that SharePoint does share the same, but we'll go on from there. Now, OneNote, you can set up too. You can set up a OneNote uh, file for the Edward team, right? Create a new notebook. Uh, let's see. Edward team notes okay the reason why I did that because it needs the SharePoint site and that's the one thing that we're missing right now is SharePoint but if you needed to add a OneNote file in SharePoint this is where it's at you click on SharePoint and it will take you to the same SharePoint site as the Office 365 group SharePoint site that's the one thing that does share so if you click on this Okay, it will take you to this URL right here that I highlighted, and it will be the same URL as it's gonna it's gonna give me an error, I know, as this one right here. You see this right here? So I click on this. It's not letting me do it because it's not set up yet. So um, I won't be able to show you SharePoint tonight, everybody. Sorry about that. But it is the same. Okay. Come on, SharePoint. <laughs> You're messing up my little video here. Okay. So, um, but that's that's something that you guys can play with too. Just understand that uh, this SharePoint site and this SharePoint site is the same. Now, Let's go back to where I was saying that SharePoint and Office 365 groups are slightly different. Maybe Hello One SharePoint is already set up, but this is only an Office 365 group. Let me see if it's set up already. 
Ah, wonderful. Okay, so we're going to use group one. Notice that group one is nowhere to be found here. It's not here. How do you do that? Are you expecting me to say that you can't? No, no, no. You can. Let's do it. Add a team. You click on add a team. You create a team. And notice this link down here that says create a team from an existing Office 365 group. I look for the group. These are all groups, Office 365 groups that have not been converted to Microsoft Teams yet. Make sure you read the disclaimer up here. Office 365 groups of less than 2,500 people can have the functionalities of Microsoft Teams added without changing the existing group in Outlook, SharePoint, and other workloads. So if there are less than 2,500 people, you can set up a Microsoft Team. Too easy, right? Or else it probably won't show up here if it's more than 2,500 people in that group. Otherwise, keep it as an Office 365 group. Um, Office 365 groups can handle way more people. But think about Teams. When you think about Teams, Teams is set up for a small group. Let's say like the IT support team probably has like 250 people. Then you got it broken down to teams of 10. That's 25 different teams. And then there's 10 members per team. So there you have, there go, you have the uh, different teams you can set up. Uh, choose teams. I'm going to choose, I think I chose uh, team one, yes. Notice that it shows up right here, Microsoft Teams. My Office 365 group is still here as well. This did not change. This did not change. And once this loads up again, I'll show you uh, something in here. Let's go ahead and create a OneNote file. And let's go ahead and create a SharePoint link too. I wonder. That's interesting. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. So I click on next. I guess you got to double click on it. And then I can click on documents. It shows you all the document libraries, right? You click on next. I can call it uh, whatever I want. And then it shows you the document libraries. Notice that this document libraries matches the SharePoint site document libraries that are located here. I'm going to show you the different. Now, this is the Office 365 group, or no, the SharePoint site for the team for the Office 365 groups. See that right there? Okay, I'm going to hit refresh. See that right there? See that right there? I just renamed it. Let's see, is there like a refresh here? No, there isn't. Okay, I got to hit refresh up here. And you see that there, it's the same thing. This is the SharePoint site, okay? Now, if I click on, this is still loading. Okay, so I'm gonna click on notebook, right? This opens up the notebook for the group. but it's not the notebook for 
teams. Okay, I want to make sure that you guys um, know that. You can sync it to your OneNote uh, application. I'm going to add a new section. Okay. There we go. This is the OneNote file for the Office 365 group. In Microsoft Teams, if you add notes for Teams, this is specific to the channel, whether it's General, Edward Team, or Sanchez Team. And I can add in notes from there. I can even add it to my OneNote application, but this is not the same notebook that is in Office 365 groups. So uh, that's about it. Uh, I just want to make sure I clearly uh, explain that because um, when I first got into Microsoft Teams after working with Office 365 groups for a year, I had to learn that on my own. And I had to like say, okay, these are not the same. These are the, this is the same, but that was different. This one's different. This calendar is off to itself. And yeah, you know, uh, one thing about this calendar, you can sync it to your Outlook just fine. But notice in Microsoft Teams, there is no calendar. What happened to it? It's just not a, it's just not an app. Um, that is something that I wish Microsoft would add one day is a calendar app, which ought to be nice because then it'll be one. Microsoft Teams can be that one place. But that's what you got Outlook for. Because when you add a calendar item to this group calendar, it will automatically sync to your Outlook if you add it to your Outlook calendar and add it as a favorite. And then it's, then you can have like your main calendar team three group office is just group calendar and hello one office is just group calendar you can have it all show up at one place which is great and you know in outlook you can even split into different calendars or you can combine them um, so that's the outlook functionality and of course that's a whole different discussion right there so yeah microsoft teams office is just group. you saw that whenever i created a Microsoft Teams, it automatically creates an Office 365 group. If you create an Office 365 group, you are able to add functionalities of the Microsoft Teams to the Office 365 group, and it's the same thing. And then, and notice that all these were originally Office 365 group, except for this one, I created as a Microsoft Team. But all of these are Office 365 groups that I converted to Microsoft Teams later. And you still don't lose any of the functionalities of the Office 365 group, but you also got the extensive functionality of Microsoft Teams. There is so much more that Microsoft Teams can do. Audio, video, instant message meetings, chat, one-on-one, -on -one, just like you can on Skype for Business. And as you know, sometime next year, it'll be early next year, probably first quarter, um, Microsoft Teams will take over Skype. Skype for Business, at least scheduled at this time, will go away. And Microsoft Teams will become the primary phone calling system if you have that set up for your tenant as well as audio conferencing, phone conferencing, uh, PowerPoint presentations, one-on-one uh, -on -one chat, video, audio, phone calls. I think I already said that. File collaboration and just a whole mess of stuff can be added. Uh, one thing that's good about Microsoft Teams that I didn't mention is that if you have regular SharePoint okay, for something, let's go to a SharePoint site real quick. I want to show you that you can make it easy for people to get to different SharePoint sites as long as they have permissions and access to it. Um, let me see, which one should I use here? Okay, 
I'm using a shortcut to a shortcut here. I don't have a well set up SharePoint site. Uh, I will admit that. All right, I'm going to go to side and screen real quick. This is the one that I use as a test to play around with. So let's say you grab this URL. This is the URL to this SharePoint site. This is in SharePoint directly, the more robust version of SharePoint. In Microsoft Teams, I can add a link to that. Click on SharePoint, use SharePoint link, put the URL, press go, press next. And notice I have two document libraries here. I can choose one of them. Okay, I could have called it silent screen, but I didn't. So, all right, this shows you the document library that is located here. And notice that this document library is the same as the one that's here. Notice I'm, I'm creating a new folder. Okay, I'm going to hit refresh. Okay, didn't I create a folder here? <laughs> okay, we try that again, shall we? All right, there we go. All right, so there's my first folder. This is the one I created in um, Teams, and this is the one I created in Office in regular SharePoint. And if you come here, I'm going to hit refresh. There's there's those two folders in the document libraries. So I just want to show you that real quick. All right, I'm going on 42 minutes here, way too long. So um, everybody, please have a good one, and thank you very much. Bye-bye.